everyone, welcome to Accounting 106 Evaluation Concepts and Methods. In this brief introduction, we will discuss the definition of evaluation, the types of value, the importance of evaluation, the standard approaches, and the limitations of evaluation. Evaluation is simply the process of estimating how much an asset or a firm is worth. The term value may take on several meanings. Liquidation value is the amount of money a company can realize by selling its assets and paying off its liabilities. Liquidation value is used when a company goes out of business or undergoes bankruptcy proceedings. Meanwhile, going concern value is the value of a company as a continuing operation. It mainly depends on a company's ability to generate cash flows. Going concern value is most relevant in business acquisitions. Book value refers to accounting value and usually reflects the historical price of an asset or a firm. Market value is the price at which a seller or a buyer can transact in the marketplace, and it is mainly determined by demand and supply. Lastly, intrinsic value is the true value of an asset or a firm. Intrinsic value is compared to market value in buy or sell decisions. These types of value may differ for an asset or a firm. For the purpose of our discussion, we focus on how market value may differ from intrinsic value. The efficient market hypothesis states that market prices reflect all relevant information about an asset or a firm. A perfectly efficient market is where market participants have access to perfect information and where any changes to this information are acted upon quickly. As an effect, an asset's market value is always equal to its intrinsic value. This implies that it is impossible to beat the market. However, in less than perfectly efficient markets, where investors don't have all the information, market value and intrinsic value may differ. In other words, an asset or a firm may be selling for more than or below what it's actually worth. Hence, significant gains or losses can be made in less than perfectly efficient markets. The difference between intrinsic value and market value is depicted in this diagram. Intrinsic value is based on true expected returns and true risks. By true, we mean the returns and risks that most investors would expect if they had all the information that exists about the company. On the other hand, market value is based on perceived returns and risk. Perceived means what investors would expect given the limited information that they actually have. When an asset's intrinsic value and market value are equal, the asset is said to be in equilibrium. Financial managers, analysts, and investors use valuation concepts and approaches to carry out their responsibilities and achieve their goals. Financial managers need to understand valuation to estimate the amount they can raise from issuing bonds or shares, to determine whether financial assets are fairly valued by the market, and to consider the impact of decisions on the value of securities, particularly common stock. Management's goal should be to maximize the firm's intrinsic value, not its current market price. Note though that maximizing the intrinsic value will maximize the average price over the long run but not necessarily the current price at each point in time. Analysts and investors perform valuation to decide whether to buy or sell securities. When an asset's intrinsic value is higher than its market value, it is considered undervalued. If it is the other way around, then it is considered overvalued. Investors buy undervalued assets and sell overvalued assets to realize gains. In the next video, we will be discussing the standard approaches to valuation, namely discounted cash flow approach and relative value approach, as well as the limitations of valuation.